Hi guys, thought I'd do a bit of an update today. Um, I'm back in Spain. You can't really tell at the minute. It's a bit windy outside, so um, I'll probably try and get some recordings next week because this week it's just too loud with the wind. Um, but it's nice to be back. I've got to admit that sunlight and chilled atmosphere here is so much more positive than the UK. Um, it just feels, I don't know. It's just better. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you cut it. It's just better. Um, so at the moment, um, I bought. I've got two um, T uh, DJI Mini uh, Mini Two drones. Uh, I'm going to start using as well. I've brought one over to Spain. I've got another one in the UK. Um, so I'm going to start using those a bit more and I went for the mini because of the new regulation changes um, in the UK um, so basically is because its weight is low uh, doesn't need all the licensing hassle that you get with the bigger ones uh, I've got a friend of mine that does the roof surveys um, and he was on about it so he says oh, I recommend that one the camera quality is better the software is better um, so end up buying two of them um haven't only flown it in the city room so far um but it does seem a good piece of kit it does seem very responsive easy to use um so i'm looking forward to getting that out once the weather changes a little bit of uh wind stability would be great um but beyond that um by probably the end of next week or maybe the week after the monday um should have finished the purchase on the house as well we've got a three bedroomed um house there's like three stories uh with balconies on the top um overlooking the beach um needs renovations but i'm not too fussed because to be fair a lot of the properties in this area were built in late 70s to probably early 90s so whatever you buy needs work anyway so you just got to assume you're going to have to spend money. If you don't do it now, you'll be spending it anyway. And I'd much rather strip it out, do it once and forget about it rather than go, oh, well, skimp on it. Um, then end up with a, a water leak, for example, from a blown tank. Then you're replastering, repainting the ceilings and stuff where if I throw the tank out now, just buy a new one. That's it good for three to five years. And um, they're quite prone to bursting the, the water tanks. But, eh. I think we'll end up spending about 25,000 euros in total. Um, but that will give us new windows throughout, um, new bathroom refits, new kitchen, uh, new water heater system, new air conditioning, um, new lighting, new fans. Uh, pretty much kit the whole thing out as a shell, um, which sets us in good stead for the, the long term. On the top balcony, I want to put a frame with glazed walls what they fold back so you can sort of use it as a gazebo if you want or a enclosed office you know that, that so not sure how much it's going to cost me that's probably going to be somewhere between four and eight thousand euros i think realistically um but adds an extra room to the building so why wouldn't you get all the functionality of still having the balcony in out there and um, because we've got two balconies because it sort of goes around in an l shape so this this one would be enclosed, and then this one would be like with a barbecue area used for laundry and all that sort of lovely stuff. Um, so yeah, looking forward to signing, signing for that, getting that done and dusted. It's one of the main drivers of getting over to Spain early, obviously. Um, see the family as well, because I've been stuck in the UK for a few months. Um, thanks to the good old COVIDs. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back in Spain. I know a lot of people have been trying to get out here. When I when I got to the airport, I would say one in three people were rejected from getting on the flight. Um, didn't have the right paperwork. Not a resident of Spain. A few issues. They're literally, no. Wasn't even getting to passport control. This is literally trying to check in with your baggage, etc. And they go, no, you're not getting on the flight. Um... So, yeah, there's a lot of disappointed people. And this one, you're in the queue, you're going, oh, I hope they accept my residency. And no issues. Because there was four reasons for me to come back to Spain. They all fit into the uh, 
the UK criteria are letting you leave. But to be fair, um, Ryanair, etc., weren't really concerned on that at all because they didn't even look for the Gov UK paperwork. Um, they're more concerned about Spain letting you in. They got the UK, but it was just like, don't care if you fill that in or not because it's the Spanish we're worried about. Um, but it's good to be back. You know, I think next week, April is saying it's 27 degrees. This week's been fairly nice, a bit windy, but we've been out at lots of restaurants. I think we've been doing about a restaurant a day for the last week, um, which is good. And I've sort of been thinking about, you're probably wondering why the channel's so quiet, but I've got to admit, it, I was reading something yesterday which actually fitted into this quite a lot. Now I've got to set the switch and alarm off, wherever it is. April set one of her alarms. Yeah, so this fits into sort of why I don't I haven't been doing a lot of videos. Because I've been stuck at work in the sense of either working or I can't really go anywhere like everybody else. I have been going out to restaurants when I can in the UK, but there hasn't been a lot else going on. I don't think um, the government really appreciate how much um, it is an, a major issue in the UK. Because if you ain't got your activities to keep you busy... You've got nothing but work. There really is nothing going on. Um, myself, keep busy with reading, keep busy with work, um, be working on some of my own projects. Um, keep keeping extremely busy, but the frustrating thing is you're still stuck in either working in the office or working at the house. And even now they're going, oh, I think it's um, the majority of nearly... Was it nearly 50 of the top business in the UK? I talked about people working from home more. I think it's a two-way thing because you can become quite isolated if you work from home all the time. Um, I could understand a couple of days a week or come, not coming in on Mondays and Fridays, that sort of stuff makes sense. Taking the strain off the city um, like London with commuter days where they recommend, you know, People take these days off, you know, work out on ticket tickets on the tube, on the uh, the um, rail networks, which days I recommend people don't come into the city. Um, so the point is you could actually spread people coming over. The, you know, somebody could be coming in Monday and Tuesday, somebody else Wednesday, Thursday, and taking some of the pressure off the rail network because that's one of the things that is a bit moronic about the way they try and solve the issues of transportation in London is by taxing it to death. Um, the fact is, the underground, etc., on peak times, is overrun. There's too many people. There's points where they shut, the, shut you off at the stairs to stopping you going into the, the, the underground to get on the rail because it's too full. There's a risk of people falling under the, under the tracks, so falling on the tracks. So the point being is, nobody really talks about the fact the rail network is already over capacity in peak hours. But this may be partly a good thing in that sense. Um, but I do think that it should be a mix of coming in and, you know, coming into the office if you can, or, well, sorry, if you want to, not if you can, because that's one thing I do not like doing, is coming to the office just because you can. Um, it should be a sort of a justified reason of needing to be there, because if you don't need to be there, don't. Um, I feel like stuff I do. I don't really need to go into the office at all now because a lot of stuff moved on to Teams. All the face-to-face um, uh, -face stuff is more relevant to the 43 sites I look after. I don't need to go into the office. It's the last place I need to be because I'm sitting there doing computer stuff. Um, it's more important that I'm actually out on site. But, yeah, well, I do. we'll see where that goes because I know they talk about it now and... At the same time, I know a lot of companies haven't paid employees for working from home for their electric, their internet, the space they take up, um, which is great for offices thinking, oh, we'll save a fortune, we'll get rid of this building. But at the same time, have they compensated the, the areas that some of these companies have stolen in other people's houses because um, they took it without giving anything in return and often assume you'll just do it. So we'll see how that pans out in the next six months because that should be an, an interesting transition. 
I think it's a great idea that the UK suddenly woken up to the fact of remote working. Because for years, I've been trying to get it from Spain, the Philippines, etc. And they're just like, oh, we like to see people in the office. Why? I don't actually work in the office. I sit in the computer in the office. I work on sites. I don't work here. This is just where I'm just sat here, just so you can see I actually still work at the company. But my delivery of work actually shows I'm still working. So I don't really need to be in 9 to 5. I normally find people that are 9 to 5 are less productive because they, they work 9 to 5. That's what they work to. They're not working to um, the output or deliverables. It, it's, it's more about, well, I turned up and I went home on time. I can't work like that. Don't see the point. I'm not producing something in a factory. I'm not producing something that is a fixed period every day. Um, but anyway, enough ranting about that stuff. But yeah, I've been trying not to do too many videos because there's been so much negative stuff out there. It's trying not to get bogged into it or dragged into it. I mean, the Brexit stuff, still got people mentioning about the Brexit. And I still say, you still got to wait two years. A friend of mine was trying to sort a driving license out here in Spain. The office uh, up in Alicante basically turned around and said, well, you have to wait till they sort Brexit out. Just use it until they sort it out. Can't do anything about it until then. So they're assuming Brexit has happened. It's going to be, it's a transition. It, it doesn't happen overnight. It's going to take years. Um, and the current government, I really don't think are fit for purpose in any form. Um... I'm not even getting into the Boris scandal stuff because, like, do, do you know what frustrates me on this is I know he knows full well he'll get away with it, and you, you and I know he'll get away with it. The only people whining about it is Labour because they think, oh, there's an opportunity here to actually get some power. You know, Boris couldn't care less, really couldn't, in my personal opinion. Um, he just doesn't seem to have any. In my personal opinion, integrity <laughs> in any form. Um, but anyway, pushing past him, can't fix him, can't do anything about him. So I'm not going to waste my uh, breath on him. Um, I do think we'll get things settled down over Europe. Though I do think the the Brexit stuff uh, is going to linger on for some period of time. I know there's a big thing about Jersey at the moment and French fishing and cutting off electric and all sorts um but a lot of that is because of stuff left in limbo etc it's just a bit pie in the sky but it'll take years um but i've got to admit from the spanish side i don't think they've been negative i mean i've heard from some people saying oh they're this you know it's like they didn't do it the uk did it the UK left the EU. Whether we like the EU or not, it's the UK that left as such. It's gone back to default, as the default is. You've then got to go through the process of setting everything up. So you can't blame Spain, you can't blame France, you can't blame whoever, because the point being is they were still there. The UK left. That, that, that's, that's it, ultimately. So there's no point going, oh, well, they're unfair. You can't have the cake and eat it. Reality. Um... I think you just have to bear bear with it. But I think the COVID um, around the transportation is the main issue. I think if the COVID situation wasn't there, um, I think some of the transportation stuff would have been accelerated simply because of the tourism markets, countries like France, UK, Spain, and many other places that have a lot of people going backwards and forwards. Um would be keen to get it to a resolution as quick as possible because obviously France does a lot of British tourism, UK does a lot of tourism from the rest of Europe, um, and Spain does a lot of tourism. Um, so yeah, I do think come the end of July, there's probably going to be a bit more activity um, tourism-wise because obviously it's all been. Don't worry about it till next year because we're going to keep the COVIDs. Um, people having the touch of the COVIDs is slowing everything down. Um, so that I'm talking about this is last year, March, April. It was like, oh, don't worry about it. Sort it next year. We'll just drag this out for a year. Um, 
Yeah, so, I mean, my personal thoughts on the, the COVIDs. Um, I find it really bizarre myself that India suddenly just got this big activity on uh, the COVIDs in the last the last month. I find it shocking. Extremely, almost unbelievable that they managed to get through last year without this stuff already happening. Now, I'm not saying I've spoken to people I know from India and other locations um, that have said to me, that they spoke to me personally, um, that the situation is exactly the same as it was last year. It's just that the media seem to be covering it now. Now, that's what they're telling me. Now, whether that's correct or not, I can't, I can't possibly say. Um, but I do find it personally a bit peculiar that we didn't have this level of um, issue and media coverage last year when Italy, Spain, UK was getting it all. Suddenly, this just come out of nowhere. So for me, it's a bit, hmm, okay. Um, so I'll leave that one there. But ultimately, things are going well here. I'm looking forward to sharing some of this stuff on the new house. And I'm going to disappear. I'm going to go and pick the kids up for school. So I'll finish my coffee and head off. Thanks for watching.